Hello, welcome to Sharing Community. Your own channel, your own community. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you. Hello, Sharing Community. Hope you all are doing well and good in your respective areas, keeping safe. On the occasion of International White Cane Safety Day, today we are live here. Uh, we will be having some eminent personalities from their respective areas. I'm Ram. I welcome you all on behalf of Sharing Community. Uh, initially, uh, Mr. Khanna with us, and uh, he will be introducing all of all of the other panelists who are going to speak today. So, welcome, Mr. Khanna, and uh, just take on from here on. Wonderful. Thank you, Ram. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody, and hello to the sharing community as well. So, our panelists today, uh, they all are, are very nice in their own <laughs> uh, respected way. Um, let me introduce Alex, Maggie, hello. They both are from UK. Hello. hello. And <laughs> Tia is from Caribbean. So, these are the three people gonna do a nice discussion today with uh thank you mr Kana. So, thank you uh, yeah carry on no problem no problem i just wanted to make sure if alex uh, maggie or princess tia wanted to say anything about themselves yeah i'm happy to start okay alex you start <laughs> hello we'll everybody go alphabetically here. It would be so much more helpful if we could see each other's faces in order to know when we're going to speak. So, my name is not actually Mackie anymore, it's Negoita because I got married and I'm the blind soap maker, so I make soaps and, and other things for a living. And I live in Durham, England, and I'm 28 and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Maggie? So my name is Maggie and I currently live in the UK but I am Polish and for I moved to the UK 10 years ago so I feel that I know a little bit about both countries which may be helpful I hope and I work as a cognitive behavioral therapist and I am totally blind and I lost my sight when I was 15 so I have also experience of, you know, being sighted and now being blind. Thank you, Maggie. Tia, uh, do you want to say something about yourself? Uh, I think that's something we, we struggle all sometimes in signal issues, isn't it? So, yeah. no problem. Uh, there is gabriel as well but i think he's struggling as well with the signal so we'll carry on um i hand over to ram oh thank you mr khanna uh thanks for this nice introduction and uh, as i said like you all will be having fun with uh, all our uh, great panelists uh, as you might have heard with their introduction the you know if we talk about the if, if we talk about brief about the history of uh, the whole mobility or the recognition of visually impaired and uh, you know in, in mainstream uh, society when in the, when it comes to walking and moving freely all have really started to grow up or started to move up from the world war one where a lot of people have gone blind and in 1921 white cane was came into existence there was a movement in France in 1933 uh, regarding the white cane. In 1964, America has recognized uh, it uh, in their parliament, uh, in the Senate. And afterwards, the whole world has started to recognize the white cane day. They have initiated uh, or started to celebrate the white cane day in on the 15th of October. So every year we celebrate or we advocate or we talk about the, uh, you know, International White Cane Day and the importance of White Cane. And today the, the personalities, the people 
the panelist will be speaking on the same they will be uh, elaborating they will be telling uh, the importance of the white cane the history of their own countries their regions they might be throwing lights on the you know uh, the the ongoing concerns and the implement implement implications on the white cane and the law and order what should be done and what's happening so uh, i think we will begin uh, first uh, we will be inviting uh, uh, alex uh, as our first speaker she will Hi. be elaborating and uh, from now on i i she's uh, we all are exciting to hear you alex no worries uh, so from um, like now you just take on take on and carry on yeah. so in terms of the history of the cane in england well we don't really celebrate things to do with disability like these big milestones for people with disabilities i mean we don't even celebrate when the wheelchair was invented but since i worked at beamish an outdoor open museum um, i know a lot about the 1900s believe it or not england actually had the guide dog before we got the cane and the other thing about the cane the current laws is that we have very strict laws about what the cane should look like. The cane that we have at the moment is pure white and has a black handle and whatever tip you like on the end of it. Dip. But dependent upon the disability, for example, if you are deaf, the cane will actually have red strips around the white of the cane marking out the fact that you are deaf as well. Now, I know it's very important to people because at the moment, a lot of visually impaired people who, who are either blind or partially sighted have decided to get themselves coloured canes. So that's canes that aren't white, but could be coloured things like blue or pink or have Swarovski crystals all the way around the handle and everywhere else so that when they're going out with friends, they're more interesting. Now, originally, I was with that group because I thought, well, you know, who am I living for and what's my cane for? Is it my cane for them or is my cane for me? And, you know, it kind of the arguments kind of pivot on that point, because if the cane is for society, then having strict laws about what the colour of the cane is and what that represents helps other people understand our needs. But if the cane is for me specifically, it doesn't necessarily have to be one colour. It could be made into a useful accessory. And I quite like that, especially as an individual, if you're out with friends. But currently, say what you like, I go with white, despite how many people complain that you're still not seen even when it's a white cane. And the tips all depend on what you're walking on. If you're walking on grass, which I do a lot of the time to get to my parents' house, it is a large jumbo rollerball, or it's a really small tip because there are lots of different types of canes. There's the tap cane, there's the rollerball cane, there's the symbol cane, which is a shorter one just made so that people know what you have. And these days, a lot more primary school kids actually know about this. So we're finally cottoning on to telling kids about disabilities how about you maggie what do you think about the laws in the uk when it comes to the cane and your perspective well probably i could speak more about poland than uk <laughs> and oh. also that may be also more useful because you already said so much about england to be fair when i moved to the uk i already was using a guide dog and because I work full time, I also haven't didn't have much um, opportunity to integrate with, you know, community of blind people. Because I noticed that sadly, many meetings and you know services are delivered during working hours, so it is really hard to join if you work during the working hours. But in Poland, which may be very interesting. Um, the very first schools for the blind were created um, um, 
just before, we can say in the early 20th century. So before then, there was no formal teaching for blind people. Mm. And there was no schools for blind people, which also means that there was no mobility and orientation. And the first school that was uh, opened was open in uh, 1918. And it was opened by a, a lady who was a member, we could say, of the previous, you know, of aristocracy. And the, she lost her sight and she decided to open a convent that would support blind people. And before she started the school, she traveled all around the world and um, um, and also um, learned about how mobility and braille are taught in different countries. And this is where we could say the history of mobility and orientation started in Poland. And um, I believe that it became more recognized and more used after the war. And this is when people had a, you know, opportunity to, to learn mobility and orientation. And interestingly, um, probably in Poland, there is a law describing different, you know, differences between different canes. Would you just describe about cane for people who have, um, if I can just add one more thing. So I recently read a very interesting article which was about like worldwide recognized symbols. So the article was saying that cane that is complete white symbolizes total blindness. Then white cane with red tip would suggest that person has some remaining vision. And as you said, white cane with um, red straps would uh, mean that the person has also hearing impairment. In Poland, interestingly, I never heard about these divisions and people were more paying attention to visibility of the cane. So, you know, to make sure that there are reflect reflective straps and that there are, um, you know what I mean, that the cane is reflecting light in during evenings and it's well visible. So sometimes there are red reflective straps, which could be confusing then for people who follow strictly that symbolism. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that um, a, in um, Poland, um, many people still struggle to accept working with wine cane. And I noticed that in Poland, um, the kind of this, the requirement of using white cane is more, I would say, enforced because I was always taught since I lost my sight that if I am not using white cane and I'm crossing the street and I am like hit by the car, that would be my fault because I didn't let the driver know that I am unable to see them and then responsibility for an accident is on me. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, and then I moved to the UK and I, I don't know whether this is legal, or whether people are just saying this, but I have heard more people saying, oh, everybody has a choice to have a cane or not to have a cane. This cannot be enforced and it shouldn't be regulated. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to hear that because I always um, was taught, uh, you know, back in Poland when after I lost my sight, that in a way, this is my responsibility to make other people safe and to make them aware of my blindness. So then they can be like, you know, taking that to account when making decisions on the road. So did I hear that right? Did I hear that, that in Poland, if you get knocked over by a car and you're visually impaired and you didn't have a cane? that they would consider it to be your fault. Yes. Wow. Because cane is to be is, is considered as a road sign. You know? Oh. So if you have a cane, you make it clear for the driver that you cannot see and that the driver knows that you don't see them 
and then they take it to account when making decisions or allowances and then the situation is clear to them. However, if you walk into the road without cane and you kind of cause accident by walking to the road, this is then your fault because they couldn't guess that you're unable to see them, which to be fair makes sense to me. Right. Well, yeah, it kind of does, but I, I kind of wonder whether that's because blind either, you know, whether we consider the car to have right of way or the, the person, which is kind of important when it comes to shared spaces, isn't it? So yeah. how about how about you, Tia? What What's going on in yours? Have we got Tia back yet? Uh, no. Tia is <laughs> not here, it looks like, yeah. Okay, well... Uh. Shared spaces is an interesting one, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, they're taking away the pavement, but people seem to congregate in the middle of the road. Now, I realised this when my mum was trying to take me to a party. Um, and she stopped the car because there were people in front and the people refused to move. And they banged on the windows and doors and shouted at my mum in the car um for driving close to them but the thing is is that you know cars in england still have right of way so when it comes to a cane and shared spaces i think it all depends on how how adept you are at feeling through your cane and and what other mobility you capabilities you have like whether you have echolocation or not yeah. um, because guide dogs do struggle but to be honest, I just teach my guide dog to stay close to the wall when I know it's a shared space, but mm. you can't always do that. So that'll be an interesting thing to discuss in consideration of shared spaces. Is it really our fault or is the fact of the matter is, is that cars shouldn't be knocking anybody over, whether it is their fault they're causing the accident or not? I think that they don't mean that... Um... I don't think that they, um, this is, this applies more to the situations yeah. where you see, well, you see, because some, uh, most of the crossings have lights and then this is clear when you would cross the road and when you wouldn't, if that makes sense. At least in, uh, Poland, it is an, basically an offense to, you know, you, you can get a pe penalty a fine, financial fine, or even more if you cross on a red light. So then it is more predictable. So of course they wouldn't hit anybody, but some crossings don't have lights. And then if the driver sees a person without the cane, they assume that the person can see them and they wouldn't cross the road. And But if they see the person with the cane, they kind of are maybe more careful, but if the person with the visually impaired person walks into the road and it's like knocked, if that makes sense, yes. then they take responsibility for not letting um, the, um, the the driver drivers know. know. Yeah, yeah. So but I also, I hope that it's not off topic. But I also um, sometimes. Uh, visit some schools for the blind and mm. I recently had a discussion with, with one of the teachers saying that if I was running the school for the blind I would expect I would basically help kids to develop right habits from the start and mm. in some schools of the blind kids walk around and they just stretch their hands and sometimes they just bump into people or touch people or do you know what I mean? Like walk into people. Yeah. And yeah, it's I really interesting because Yeah, I... and I was yeah, and I was saying, listen, in society at workplace, it is not acceptable behavior. So why do you accept it now? And when do you tell kids you can't be doing this? You know what I mean? Yes, Look... I do know what you mean. Because yeah. at the at the end of the day in Worcester College for the Blind we weren't allowed a guide dog and that's mm -hmm. so again so, so here, even though it's against the law sorry. we weren't allowed a guide dog the other thing about it that's very interesting is that they said well if we yeah. allow all of the students to carry cane and use them all the time even in the building 
they'd have mm. problems so, with that's really getting interesting. canes Alex, uh, tangled. Uh, and here, here, it, uh, here it comes an important point. Uh, if you could elaborate more, like, you know, it's it seems like the the way we, we are heading on the discussion, you know, with the traffic rules, it must be you know you know initiated uh, in terms of education that the white king should be like, you know, how to behave in shared spaces with everyone. It should be taught in the school level education as well, isn't it? Of you course. Mean? Yes. If if the so, area has the funding yes yeah it, 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 it's 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 a really important aspect i know which comes out in the discussion and uh you know i was just reading the uh, wpu's statement and it was important this they talked they were saying that you know uh, I, when it comes to eye to eye contact sight it's or uh, can you know uh, make their way ease uh, on the other hand we need to have traffic sound signal systems everywhere mm -hmm. right uh, in order to have appropriate uh, especially if you see if you might have heard about japan they have a really good system you know uh, when to cross the red light when the green light is uh, you know uh, just green light is on or they have good system so in that way uh, just tell us a bit about your uh, whether these kind of systems are there in your countries or uh, what the uh, activists are doing and what government is initiating for this. Uh, it's If it's already there, it's fine. If it's not, then what, uh, what's been being done or doing, uh, the government is doing? Alex, we'll start with you. Okay. Well, the government are very helpful in the fact that if you are a person of a lower income, they do provide you with a cane. Okay, the cane tip is the cheapest they can get, but it works. And it's up to you what kind and type of cane tip you want, and it's up to you to buy it in the general manner if you want to change it. But if you are a person who is deemed to be in a lower economic status, um, they do provide you with canes. Uh, mobility lessons are a bit higgledy piggledy, um, but. I think that's because most adult and children's services don't really communicate. So in England, it's actually pretty good in comparison to other places. Um, I got my cane training. Mine was started at secondary school, not primary school. At primary school, I was being taught to get used to walking with a person and taught how to use the roads. Um, I would tell my helper when to cross. Um, I wouldn't use a cane as a young child, although I did learn when I got into about year four or five, they started me off with a tap cane. Then I went on to the rollerball cane. I did have a symbol cane, but I never used it. I didn't really see the point of the symbol cane. I thought it was a useless piece of plastic. Um, and as teenagers, we tend to lament the fact that nobody seems to get it in class, what the cane is for. And if they do, they're a bit nervous because everybody's staring at you because you're using a cane, which is great in one way and rubbish in your social life, because especially as teenagers, because you all want to be the same. So I think the government are doing really well. And I, I can't just blame the government. I think that we as individuals are partially responsible what people know about the cane and teaching each other about the cane. Um, what do you think about blind people teaching mobility? Do you think that's a, a good idea or not? I have no experience of that, but to be fair, I can't imagine this a little bit. Because uh, I think that in mobility, there is a lot about the posture and um, I don't think that without having any sight, I would be able to assess somebody's posture. Do you know what I mean? And assess whether they are safe. But I believe people can do everything if they want to. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, to, like on this part, like uh, it's difficult. But then, you know, I always feel when it comes to policy making, when it comes to decision making, uh, others used to decide on behalf of us. And 
in this part i believe that you know visually impaired must be considered somewhere that what we want as well because we don't want every time society to make universal laws for us somewhere they they must consider us they 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 need to take our consideration our feedbacks which is which are very mm. important no and uh, now maggie uh, we would come with the same questions uh, to you as well like uh, on mm. on in your country what is the uh, you know as you already told a bit but then still what do you think about all these aspects like eye to eye contact especially you know when it comes to sharing sharing spaces when it comes to primary education and how about the current structure or you know law and order regarding okay. white cane and what's happening yeah so white cane definitely as in england it is widely recognized and as i said it is even in like road codex as a as a sign which I already explained and um in poland we in all of the big towns i believe and in smaller as well we have uh, signals audible signals on crossings on majority of the crossings however i personally prefer english solution where we don't on some crossings we have audible sounds yes and rotated cones and on some um, crossings we have only this rotating cones so the story is the, the the thing with rotating cones is that there is a box then you press the button and then under the box on the bottom of the box there is like a cone with mm -hmm. indented ridges and you can feel it when it starts rotating you know that it is a green light I think that it is a better solution for several reasons. First of all, it is also good for people who are deaf blind. And also even for blind people, sometimes if you have, you know, like large crossings and there are few lanes, mm -hmm. I personally get confused because I don't hear well enough which is beeping. Is it the closer one or the one which is further away? Or if it's a plus crossing, you know, like or T crossing, it is hard to hear sometimes which one is beeping. So I prefer to feel it and to be sure that I can cross. So I'm a big fan of, you know, English system here. And I also know that in Poland, there is one person, they started their own foundation and they invented something which is called two, two point. And that is connected uh, the system is connected with apps on people's phones so you can locate the crossing using the phone and an app and then the app tells you whether you can cross or not and there are only i think over 100 of them in the country but if they were more widely introduced that would be a really good option because even if you are in unknown area you would be able to find the crossing independently and easily as well an app so yeah is this app called the be my eyes app for example no 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 it is specially just for crossings oh. so That's so great. in the first place you get a map and where the crossing is and mm -hmm. then when you approach the crossing it tells you whether it is a red light or green light or yellow light which That's is really nice. good i just the only objection that i have okay. is how possible yeah. it is to make it like like universal in whole country and i am a fan only of solutions that can be implemented on wide scale do you know what i mean so yeah. everybody everywhere can use it that's that's interesting uh that's really interesting and one point initially you guys uh you you in initiated uh you know that's in england it's not uh part of celebration uh what do you think uh you know when it comes to social awareness you know in the country a lot of countries especially when it comes to african countries asian countries maybe more, a lot of european countries as well you know it's it's important why we celebrate here uh let me tell a bit because no one um, like generally people are not really knowing about it and to make them aware we uh, we have decided or we thought that it can be the best idea to make them aware about white mm -hmm. cane the whole system why the white can only be chosen like to to know uh, to have uh, uh, for the visually impaired so mm, like analyzing all this concern we used to 
you know just celebrate this so what your recommendations can be to you know make socially aware since you are having a comparatively you know when it comes to of course when we compare england also with india it's like quite you you are far better uh, in that case you know we can say but then what you suggest how to make people aware despite making you know rules and regulations because of course making rules and regulations it's a part of government but then when it comes to you know our our uh, as an individual what do you what do you say can i say something and i hope that it's okay to say that but uh, you see in poland there is very few guide dogs okay very very few so white cane is more widely recognized as a symbol of blindness and i never had a problem that people didn't know what cane is for in england though guide dogs are very popular and i noticed that when i walk with my cane which sometimes i do um for instance when i go to london because my guide dog would probably go crazy in london then i feel like i'm invisible like i am not there do you know what i mean when i walk with the guide dog i feel like everybody can see me everybody smiling people will say hello like i feel like i am there and i feel safe when i, I walk with cane you know it's, it's also, like i'm not there basically yeah, yeah so it's i think that cultural yeah. thing yeah yeah so i maybe think that i don't know you, you correct me but i feel like because in poland there's no option of a guide dog everybody is appreciating the cane yeah. but in england i feel that I don't know, correct me please, but I feel that people who use the cane and not the guide dog are seen, are seen like more disabled or less capable. But I don't agree with this because although I am a guide dog user for 15 years, I still see the value of cane fully. And I believe that you will never be a good guide dog user if you are not good at using cane. No way. This is my personal opinion. But I think that maybe we should like promote cane, you know, not to show cane as less than a guide dog. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, at school, I found the cane very difficult. And I know school children who have used the cane uh, be banned from using the cane in schools as a health and safety matter. I think my worst the worst time I've ever had discrimination, um, I didn't have a guide dog, um, but it's usually under the guise of health and safety. Now, I'm not saying that people with guide dogs don't get chucked out of places for health and safety, but in terms of, of the law, we in England are having an issue um, because we're wanting to be able to vote for things, you know, for us as a blind community to vote for things. but our voting system is not really built for blindness and most of the tactile markings provided don't actually fit the modern day ballots and haven't done in the past two years of me being able to vote so i know a lot of blind people who don't vote so in order to get things changed legally we do have to be able to vote as well but the the interesting thing about the cane is this they're seeing a great big metal or wooden stick coming towards them, which is terrifying. I got, you know, I got a lot of complaints from students saying that I'd hit them in the ankles with the cane and that I'd done it deliberately. And I think the thing about the cane is the fact that it does actually look more scary to people, um, which is possibly why they're trying to colour it and make it look more interesting to the sighted because we've lost all this knowledge on all white canes mean this white cane with red stripes means that i just got told you know i got told that i was a health and safety risk i got told to leave a magistrate's court because they considered me as a health and safety risk because i couldn't find my way to an exit and they wouldn't tell me now, I can't go back and find out what their reaction would have been if I had a guide dog, okay? Because there are lots of misconceptions that are very irritating about guide dogs as well. Um, and I think it's because most guide dog users in England have known the cane and therefore have 
learned ways of finding places with the dog and the cane as well. Um, most guide dogs are used in places that have been taught to the owner and the dog. Um, you can go in places that you don't know with a dog, obviously, because it is possible, but that doesn't mean that you wouldn't take your cane with you in case the dog got confused and didn't mm. know where they were going. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, th I, I do, I did feel so ignored that I wanted to get a guide dog, uh, because mm. a guide dog in England specifically tells you that you're blind. But there are parts of England now um, that have large populations of people who don't culturally like dogs or faith-wise don't like dogs that ban them. Um, and now that we've got guide ponies coming in, very few and far between, but they are coming in. My question is whether it will start being that guide dogs can't go into buildings and we have to leave them outside. So it might go back to use of the cane mainly because when you have a guide pony, you go to a place, it takes you from A to B and you don't necessarily take the pony in with you, you know? So all, yeah, you, 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 you rightly pointed out. All in all, everything is, comes out as the awareness in general about white cane. And there must be on part of government, on part of, you know, individual. But how to ensure that awareness, which is very important. Because, you know, every time we cannot feel comfortable with the guide dogs as well. You know, sometimes you need... You know, in certain places, you need that you, you must carry on your white cane also. So in that case, like since I'm staying in India, uh, it's not at all possible here to have a white, uh, in fact, guide dog uh, because of infrastructure, the yes. awareness and yeah. the government law and order and everything. Well, so in that know. case, yeah, the only, only thing which comes uh, or which saves us, which is white cane all the way so uh, that is where i i find and we always write to government we always you know make people aware generally that whenever you see anyone coming having white cane do not ask him to or do not leave uh, do not like tell him to he move here and there remove the things which are in between like which are coming in between him or uh, i don't know for example, I'm walking on a footpath or I'm pedestrian, right? I'm walking on tactile plate and some people are just sitting or doing something, for example, let's say. So in order to moving me, they should move those people because I'm on a right way. So in that case, what I, uh, I feel is that, you know, one should have a proper awareness, proper uh, I mean, guidance and uh, proper law and order. Uh, and with this, um, Mr. Khanna, if you're in, can you hear us? If you can hear us, just can you see the questions? If we have something on our Facebook, people must can be Can I also add one more thing, uh, please? Yeah. Yeah. Because I sure. think that also law is one thing, but also um, I think that creating a positive image of the person using white cane is also very important because I feel that at the moment, especially in the UK, probably in the US is the same because I also lived for a short while in the United States. I think that basically the, the, the image of the blind person with the guide dog is seen like a positive image. And I think that it, it is very important in all of the countries to create that positive image of the blind person using white cane because i think that it also requires more effort more attention in some ways more skills to use white cane and uh, it, it is important that people that you know that this is being recognized and i think that things like emojis help a lot and i am very glad that they are introduced to you know Apple to iOS and I believe they're also on Android because maybe even somebody swiping across them will notice them and you know have reflection on that yeah and also yeah. 
we have uh, more chances to use them in like social groups or you know even titles of youtube videos and this also can help to create positive image yes. so like things like signs posters i don't know like some educational videos emojis all of that can help yeah it can help a lot in terms of making it seem more positive one interesting comment my dad made and it's this he was talking to a taxi driver the taxi driver drops off the blind man and off the blind man goes and his cane hits the wall and then and then starts going round the corner and it's hitting the sides of his pathway up to his door and it hits the plant pot he bends down he picks the plant pot up he gets his keys out and puts it in the door and the taxi driver was standing there going does this man need help because he's he's crashing his cane into everything and because he looked more helpless to this taxi driver the taxi driver was really insistent in helping him to the door whereas the same man had the, had the same experience with the blind person when he had a guide dog and the guide dog just gets out he puts the guide dog in the harness and there's no knocking into anything even with the cane and i think that that's why even though we're actually doing that deliberately to the sighted that looks like we're really confused Mm, yeah, um, definitely. And I know it sounds really ridiculous, but it really does to, to sighted people. It makes us look very confused. Sighted people, if you're listening, it's fine. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hitting it for a reason. Um, you know, if it's a person's ankle, I'm sorry. Uh, you should have said hello to me or made some kind of noise to to say I'm not a post box in the middle of the street. I am a, a man with a red cross top on. It's just that you think that the government, or at least the County Council of Durham, are stupid enough to erect a post box in the middle of the street, which says a lot more about you and your relationship with your county council than it does about me as a man looking like a post box. Mm. And I tapped it gently with my cane to because I was thinking, why is there a metal thing there? And I just needed to know that it was that it was what I was thinking it was and you know that whole embarrassing moment where you think oh my mm. god it's a person you know there are always good things and bad things mm. I think my worst session with a cane is when I walked out of a church and a little toddler is running he's happy he's running and he and, and then he trips over my cane because it was just a timing incident issue and the kid goes flying and the mother gets very upset and I get upset because I've probably just damaged that toddler. I mean, you know, with a guide dog, it would have been different. The toddler would have got a mm. lick to the face and started crying anyway. But mm. it would have been a lot less visually impacting yeah. to the sighted. So I'm not really sure how we're going to make the cane look interesting to sighted people unless we make it into an interesting accessory or, like, colouring it and making it interesting. Or if we just explained it more yeah or if we just um initially put mm. our cane down to meet somebody so that they don't see mm. it and then when it's up we're not necessarily a changed person mm. we're the same person we just happen to have a stick in our hand i have one question about use of cane in india because yeah. i know that some places in india are very crowded and for me as a cane user the hardest part was actually to walk in the crowd and i had many canes that were basically broken by accident of course because somebody stepped on them because they didn't see it so how how do you cope with that that's a really good question uh, thanks uh mr Khanna, can you hear us first yes 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 okay can you hear me now Yes, we can. Yes, I will be answering okay, that question. Wonderful. Yeah, actually, Tia, Tia is there as well. She can hear. Could you tell me what the time is, guys? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I understand. It's right. seven o'clock. Sorry. 
1859. Time is nearly 1859, seven right, okay. I will see you later, guys. Uh, thank it was you. lovely talking to you, and thank you very, very much for inviting me. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'm sorry and that thank you for your time. <laughs> Alex, thank thanks. you for your time, uh, Alex. Appreciate it. it. It's really great talking to you, and it's a nice discussion. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, coming on the on the point, uh, of course, I will look at it, uh, Mr. Khanna, about Tia. Uh, I haven't seen her till now, but then, okay. When it comes to look, India, I've been constantly, uh, we, we are all, we are all use here white canes. And when it comes mm -hmm. to crowded place, you just, you know, especially in the cities, things are comparatively all right. I won't say it's all right, fully fine, but mm -hmm. comparatively, it's all right. In some of the cities, you are having pedestrians to walk footpaths, but they are broken as well. So in that case, as you're visually impaired, you need to aware that in a particular city, how to walk, how to assist yourself, right? It's important. Mm -hmm. So in a crowded place, just move slowly. Try to move slowly as much as you can. And try to avoid the obstacles and move your stick more right and left. Try to cover more and more ground. Though it's dis difficult, we also face the same. Mm -hmm. But it is only one option which you know which can make you more comfortable in general so what we do is like i generally when I, whenever i see more crowded i try to bang my stick more which is not a good sign but then we have to do we are forced kind of to do this and do, do this and mm -hmm. i try to cover more ground in order to save myself also mm -hmm. i try to walk on the side way on the on the pedestrian also in order to avoid any other uh, hurdle mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that is mm -hmm. what we, we, we do generally here and when it comes to villages when it comes to other rural areas or backward areas of course it's not at all accessible and um, there are some programs initiated by the government but still still a lot of things to be need to be done mm -hmm, and practically mm -hmm. you see the whole things are you know, on a on a really on a bad note on a on a backward mm -hmm. area. So uh, these are the things and these are the problems which we face. And mm -hmm. also, I've just uh, seen a comment. Thank you, Sonam, uh, the watching live and all other people who are watching live. If you have any comments, uh, for uh, you can just post in the uh, in the live video mm -hmm. for uh, five to six minutes. We are here. If if Tia joins, then we will proceed more further and uh, it's Maggie uh, it's having just uh, you know interesting time and an interesting discussion so all in all we just found one thing before Maggie say something sorry uh, yeah. the major thing is that we need to make sure that how we can aware people in general mm -hmm. uh, despite making policies of course it's important to to to, to you know one need to have an initiative from the government, not on paper, on ground level. And I always emphasize on the point that, you know, when it comes to feedback, you have to include the concerns, concerned people, visually impaired, you know, the, because we are facing problems. We don't want every time the common society to build laws and orders, or one should say universal law and order, you know to how to deal with any kind of a hurdle so you must include us you must take our consideration common feedback and then proceed further yeah yeah maggie you could uh, proceed now i just wanted to really ask you one question <laughs> so sure. um do you think that uh, anybody who has visual impairment and they would come um, to india how do you think they could prepare themselves to like uh, travel with the cane independently and would you say is there anything that we would need to like i don't know take to consideration like do you use any specific type of cane that it's easier or i don't know for instance when i was using cane full time let's say i always had like rigid cane because it was for me the most reliable but i also had a like folding cane in my backpack in case something you know my 
my thirst can got broken or anything. Do you use any techniques like that to make yourself more safe? Or do you, for instance, use any high visibility jackets or bands as well to make yourself more visible? No, I just use white cane, which is a folding white cane. That's a four mm -hmm. or five poles. It's mm -hmm. around uh, maybe four and a half feet tall, you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in general also, we we use the same cane here. Uh, like mm -hmm. we cannot, we, we some, in, some people initiated uh, something like there's a uh, cane which is having vibration, but it is not useful here. That is where yeah. I felt like uh, when you don't take feedback and just randomly come, it won't work. Because in crowded places, all these things will not work. Yeah, of and, course, uh, because it will vibrate all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And despite this, uh, we don't use any kind of symbol on our body, like uh, neither mm -hmm. any band or jacket. Or Just when you move with white cane, it's, it's common uh, here. People will recognize, okay, someone is blind coming, though. There can be some mm -hmm. stigmas, or stereotypes also, but then they will realize, okay, someone who is blind is coming. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, also in uh, lines, if you need to get in line for something, you'll get priority. Uh, and all the stuff where you find crowded places and you get to done, like for example, taking tickets. You don't need to stay in the rows for like, you can just move ahead. You can pick your ticket. You can ask them this uh, since uh, like, if, oh, in case that's they, nice. they don't see, yeah, if, in case they don't see, you can uh, uh, just ask them that I'm blind, I need ticket. Okay. In that consider. case, you're lucky, actually. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> for the blind person, it is hard to follow the cue. Like, I am totally blind. And my technique is to ask the person who is just ahead of me to say, oh, can you tell me when you move on? Do you know what I mean? When the cue move on? Because I, I can see where when the cue is moving. So I always stay behind or I just get confused. And also, yeah, yeah, it's true. And also, there is a human nature, you know. Mm -hmm. so people always try to get first than anyone else. So that's also fact, you know. You are standing, for example, and someone are having friends, like someone is standing, like four people mm -hmm. uh, in front of you, and they might, they might get someone there that they're, they're, they're known in, and you will not know. So in that case, it's our, it's a, it's a one of the biggest part of our activism. You have to give priority. Even I have heard that same is in pakistan as well so this is mm -hmm. good you, know, you need to understand it's not that we want it it's the it's a, the it's a part of their you know social work whatever you say it's our mm -hmm. need as well and it's the demand so that is yeah. where the uh, you know this is laws and order stands and we must advocate about white cane in general we yeah. need to have a universal design where people recognize it of course, we can carry different kinds of white canes. For example, I've seen there is a someone came from Russia and she was using a white cane as having a ring and also it's it you you can move it while sliding. It's having a kind of a uh, wheel, but then everywhere it will not work because since we are having we all are having different different uh, infrastructure. So yeah. in terms of uh, you know height and uh, thickness and all we need to have kind of a universal design but while considering visually impaired in the consideration <clears throat> and yes uh, when we talk about discrimination yes it's everywhere it's kind of similar you face kind of a di di different discrimination and we can face a little bit of different discrimination but it's kind of same so in that case we need mm. you know strong activism in order to abolish the whole discrimination and also strongly we need to advocate and write to the government as well as uh, wherever we are studying, wherever we are working, mm -hmm. we need to advocate about the mm -hmm. all the white cane and the, you know, what we want actually. Yeah, that is what my opinion, that is what we do here in India. What Can we just draw our attention to a different aspect of this? Because I totally 100% agree with you that law and legislation is important. But I also believe that um, a lot is depending on the knowledge of individual and perception of individual people. Because for, in, for instance, in the UK, we have... 
all laws and regulations that we need, I could say probably, but still, if people have no understanding of our needs, they will still break the law. Do you know what I mean? Like, for instance, we have all of the laws about the guide dogs. We still suffer. You know, I, for instance, had many situations when the driver saw me with the guide dog and they just drove off. And there is nothing I can do because I didn't see the car. I didn't see the registration. I only heard them just, you know what I mean? Somebody told me, oh, do you wait for a taxi? Then I start walking towards the taxi and the taxi drives off. And there is, you know, there is no witnesses, nothing you can do. So I personally sometimes think that talking to, you know, the society and creating a positive image and, you know, raising awareness of society is as important as law because you can have all of the laws and people, you know what I mean? Not always will respect it, but if people have positive attitudes and good understanding, then they will respect it maybe sometimes even if the law is not there. So I'm not saying to neglect one point, just pay attention to both. I would say we need to pay attention to both. Yeah, that's 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 where education stands. I know we, yeah. we need to educate the concerned people. Either it comes to driver, either it comes to police personnel, whatever yeah. it is. Let me take, uh, share one incident, which is very horrifying, to be honest. Um, you know, the previous year we had a protest in our uh, country, uh, not in our country, our university uh, regarding P hike or something like that, right? So one of the visually impaired uh, amongst us was traveling as well. We were, we all were participating. But there was a guy uh, and police have in, has initiated a lati charge. Uh, I mean, uh, they they kind of, you know, trying to remove the protesters, uh, you know, from the place. So they initiated, uh, you know, everyone beating uh, like anything. So what happened that the people who were with the guy have told the police he's blind. He cannot run the way everyone are. So just let us take him away and you can continue the way you want. But then police said, okay, uh, don't worry. We will make him uh, reach safely. Don't worry, L you can leave him here. And suddenly after all left, all were running, saving themselves. Police has, when everyone gone away, police has started beating up, beating him up. And which is really shameful part on behalf of police. And oh, they gosh. have, yeah, the, he's been really brutally beaten up. And afterwards, we had a we had launched a huge protest against the police itself. They should avoid such things, and police must be educated. You know, by doing this, you are uh, you are you are stopping a disabled. For example, if you you might have found a visual wheelchair user, even he cannot think of even running. You you would have killed him. So we had launched a protest and asking that not only tender apology but also realize it, it, it must be a part of your law that in case you yeah. see any blind person, any disabled, Well, beating yeah. anybody is against the law. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not only the blind, yeah. but anybody. Yeah. Yeah. That, that we, we yeah. have already told them, but then in case you, if you see any disabled, you cannot run, you know, the way others can, you have to, you have to so, show like your, hum, your, your human, human, humanness, which is very important. Yeah. So. In that case, you know, what this comes is like, fine, you're making law on paper, that's fine, but you need to educate your people as well, those who are enforcing yeah. law anywhere. So that's uh, the point which I uh, I found. And that's why we always uh, talk about it. Now, when it comes to even, you know, uh, having guide animals or uh, when it comes to any kind of, uh, you know, even in traffic or whatever it is, we yeah. just talk that proper education need to be done. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. But and I also believe that it a lot depends on us because I know, I know I have some blind friends and some of them get very annoyed when people ask them questions and people think, oh, you should know this. But in all honesty, there is, I don't believe that anybody should know anything. Do you know what I mean? And it's also our re responsibility to share that awareness and to do it in 
possibly the nice way. Because yeah. I remember when I was sighted, I didn't know anybody blind and I didn't have much understanding of this. And I was willing, but if I asked the question and if I was answered this question in not in a nice way, I maybe would be like anxious about asking again, if that makes sense. And um, so I think that it is, of course, a law. There is also like public um, uh, campaigns, but also it is probably up to us how we present and share the knowledge. Yeah, of course. And like uh, you are doing a good job, yes, because you it sounds like you do a lot about advocating and sharing, you know, information and making people aware. Yeah, that is what uh, before Mr. Kana speaks, uh, it's very, very important, you know, activism. That is where mm -hmm. I feel I, I strongly feel whatever we con contribute to our community, of course, is, you know, even if we contribute 0.1%, you know, just getting success. It's huge because it would take ages to get aware people because, you know, uh, there's a one line, you know, when it, we, when we talk about gender equality, it's too much to achieve. Though we have a lot of uh, legislation on people, uh, paper, and we uh, used to, you know, make aware people with a lot of various stuff. We, you know, generally we, we used to make aware people, but then still, you know, it's lacking. So in that case, we are really deprived in that case, right? And we are on a minority note. It would take time, but then it will come. But then one point, which is very important on behalf of our note, as well as the common society's note, and as well as government's note, we have to have a combined effort, but while considering visual impairments itself, that is what I emphasize again, I'm emphasizing again and again, because we need to be considered otherwise, People generally will fo form laws, but we won't be considered and then we will face hurdles and problems. So we need to be considered in policy making for us at least. Uh, that is what I found interesting and the whole discussion was uh, really interesting. And yeah, Mr. Khanna, you can take over and you can say words. Can you hear us, Mr. Khanna? Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Ram, and thank you, Maggie. Thank um, you. Yeah, there was, there was some more people actually. There was uh, one person from Australia. Basically, we have a timing time zone, <laughs> and also one from Canada. But we will try to do this like kind of often in the future, and maybe we can discuss on something else, you know, in the future. So um, we will invite, you know, time to time our speakers and of course thank you to you as well maggie and thank you to other thank you. speakers who joined us today and thank you ram for your time as well appreciate it being a good yeah. host uh, it's pleasure always mr khanna to work for the sharing community group because i haven't seen really good groups who are working tirelessly international on an international level right so it's important to you know make sure that we could do we could collaborate or we could you know, do something for our community. And uh, when it comes to disability, it's always like, uh, it's always interesting and Im important for me uh, to mm. take something for our community and to give something to our community. And I would be really pleased in case I visit any of the countries to meet all of you people. It would be amazing, you know, and having these virtual discussions means a lot for me and appreciate also the people who are watching and who are watching still with us uh sorry in case we couldn't get any of the comment but still uh appreciate it and really it's nice discussion and again uh for the ending remarks uh <laughs> i would leave to mr Kana to end it uh, formally and then we're, we're going to end the live can i also thank say thank you for inviting me sure, and, sure. I'm, and i'm very sure. very uh, wow. happy and very pleased that i could hear uh, experiences especially of you run from India because I have never been there and it's very interesting to hear experiences of people from different countries and I can just only add that you know I lived in Poland now I live in the UK I also have some experiences of living in the United States so I can see how these three countries can differ so it would be in the future really really interesting to hear views from people from other continents because we can learn a lot 
And because I had opportunities to live in different countries, I always take the best from everything I have learned from these places. And I think that we, if we could all take the best from our communities and from our attitudes and from our knowledge, then we would be so much more empowered. And then we would all basically have everything the best from all over the world. So thank you very much. And thank you for watching as well. Yeah, and with this, before Mr. Khanna starts, just one point. Uh, we can all, what we can do is that on the basis of our discussion, uh, we can write a letter to WPU as well. That we, th these these points we have, uh, you know, if we were being able to draw. And it would be great. Uh, so we, we, we will plan on this, what we can do. And uh, of course, we will be having a kind of a series on this, as Mr. Khanna said. So, yeah, Mr. Khanna. <laughs> Not, no problem not, no problem that's totally true and yeah sorry for uh because i'm struggling with some kind of network here as well <laughs> so i'm missing in between but yeah i got your point of course we will do discussions and as maggie said to know um opinions from different parts of the world we will invite somebody from africa in the future and also from uh yeah uh, there was um somebody from india as well actually so <laughs> last minute Obviously, he couldn't join us, but like, likewise, we're going to do in the future again. And it, in that point, because I'm struggling with networks, so I, I might say I leave it to you people, Maggie and Ram. I don't know if I'm going to still, am I still audible or not sure? Yes, you are. Very much audible, Mr. Khanna. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Mr. Khanna. And uh, as, as in the end, as I said, like uh, we already mentioned it, that we need an initiative. And we all have to initiate to aware our society, our people, our governments, and the common the common world as well. Though it would take time, but yeah, uh, it was a panel discussion. It was a night discussion, and already we thanks. And uh, now we are going to end the live. And uh, thanks sure. for watching. Uh, hopefully, we will come with more stuff. Thanks, sharing community, and all the people who are watching and who will be watching and who have been watching, uh, who were watching. So to be honest, so thank you. Yeah, thank you to the audience and thank you everyone. <laughs>